Hey everybody, my name is Wally Marzano Lesnovich. This is Lisa Black. As Chris said, thank you so much for coming out tonight to the third annual East Hampton Film Festival. Um, uh, yes, please stick around for the Fast Track program, which is screening as part of the seven o'clock shorts. We have screenwriter, director, producer, Nick Wilkinson in attendance, and our actress, Satomi Hoffman is here. So we hope you can stick around. And we have the producer, Lisa <laughs> Gonella, am I saying that right? Gonella. Gonella Black, Black from North Edison, New Jersey. I've got my James Lipton cards here, if anyone remembers <laughs> inside the actor's studio. Lisa is the co-chair of the Producers Guild of America Capital Region, a uh, independent film producer extraordinaire. We've worked together on a couple of projects. Uh, we are many. friends, many projects now. Thank God she keeps casting me. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna talk about what it is to produce independent film in 2024. But we're gonna start with, you worked in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, according to my research, yeah. my half-assed internet research. Yeah. Um, and so what led you to leave that and go into independent film, and why was it the paycheck? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Hi. Well, thanks, uh, East Hampton Film Festival and Chris Berry for, for having me, and thanks, everybody, for coming here. Um, uh, just to back up just a bit, little bit, I actually, my first job um, was, um, big one, was with uh, Pricewaterhouse before it was PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, Big Six Accounting. So I did a lot of events there, so I, that was kind of a creative thing. And then after that, I went on to um, Miller Brewing Company. So any of the sports signage that you saw from Maine to, to Maryland was, was myself and my, and my team. Why do I bring that up is that at each stage of your life, you pick up a, a set of skills. And uh, all the while, uh, after that, I had two kids, moved to Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, my best friend, uh, Mark Fergus, who uh, we went to a little school down the road called Boston University. So I have a big affinity for, Ooh, yes. for this Clap. area. Round of applause, yeah. please, thank you. So um, he was a, what you would call an aspiring screenwriter. I'm, get, I'm getting to the answer. Uh, please, and, uh, we've got plenty so, of time. And we're done. Thank yeah. you so much. So, you know, Mark would write, two of our classmates are back there, by the way. So Mark would write these, you know, screenplays and he'd be up all night and da, da, da. And lo and behold, he did not also get into the industry right away. So um, by this point, I was working for um, Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, they had moved me to a lovely little state, which I currently reside in, called uh, Delaware. And uh, I still live there. And so all the while, Mark finally got his big break. He was directing his first feature. Um, this is 2008. And. Uh, no, is this first snow? This is first snow. So this is first snow. Right. So I was basically his manager. I was part of the creative industry. I've done a few other things um, on the side, if you will, and we'll get to that. But why did I leave pharmaceuticals? Is that, listen, it was the worst economic downturn on the planet to start your own company in 2008. Um, but I had a little project that um, you may remember called uh, Domenica Cameron's Corsese, who uh, had yes, another indeed, film, indeed. and uh, kind of just watched all these. Here again. True. Kind of watched these all these creatives struggle with what it is. They, these wonderful, beautiful, creative people. But um, no offense, none of you really understand the world of business <laughs> or film is a business and marketing and any of that. So then I kind of saw the opportunity to kind of jump back in to what I love to do in this creative part and marry business with creative. And uh, started my own shingle in 2008. And, Which is uh, Garnet Girl. Garnet Girl. Um, and I haven't looked back. So, uh, Although my accountant phenomenal. would be mad exactly. that I left my yeah. big seven Corporate figure salary. Exactly. exactly. But so, all right, so two questions from that. Yep. One is, were there some independent films that inspired you when you were going into the business, uh, obviously you've always loved movies. Were there a couple of titles that you thought, well, that's the kind of picture I'd like to be involved with? Yeah, I think for me, it, it's, and I'll get to the titles. I think for me, it's like when you, when, when I see a, a picture, you kind of always know what's, all the pieces are working together on, on all cylinders, production design and costume design, and the score is amazing, and the sound is great, and you know the, the blacks are not crushed all the way. You know, 
that that producer and that director and the, the entire team was working, you know, in harmony. Mm. And those are the kinds of films that you're just like, okay, that yeah. that 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 Everyone I want to do. Everyone was making the same movie. One hundred percent. So I mean, what? Which ones are they? I mean, a gazillion, right? Almost Famous, I would say, sure. is, is my Phenomenal. ideal. You know, Motion music picture. meets you know, yeah. you're you know, just great acting and brilliant screenplay and, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean that, and then I like the classics. I mean, I I love you can uh, you can't take it with you, oh. you know, with the Barrymores sure, and of and uh, and I uh, Holiday with uh, uh, Cary Grant and Cary Grant, and uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I like classics, and then I also you know, who doesn't love a good one? Harry Met Sally, of course, which is why brilliant. I think you and I brilliant. really get along. Yes. You know, Nora Ephron mm -hmm. and and. Uh, so I think writers, for sure, the stories, for sure, but it's the ones that really touch you that you know that they did write with all the pieces. So if that answers your question, probably it does. not. No, it does. <laughs> so I'll let you know when you don't. Okay. So um, what, how did that come about? What made you make films? Uh, why Norway? And what can international financing help people do if they're aspiring filmmakers? Right. So, um, wow. Okay. So, uh, Italian American, by the way. Uh, why Scandinavia? I have no exactly. idea. But apparently, I'm catnip for Scandinavians. So, like, who doesn't love that when you're 40? Sure. Yeah, you're like, catnip, yeah. great. I'll stay here. Um, I was kind enough to be invited in 2011 on what they call a producer's envoy. Um, Technically, that meant some guy calling me on the phone named Gary Springer, uh, and I really thought it was like Gary, like somebody was punking me. Like he's like, "We want to take you to Norway on this amazing ten-day, all expenses paid, blah blah blah." And I'm like, I, I didn't answer his call back. I'm like, "No <laughs> exactly. way, somebody's punking me." Um, it turned out that that then I got a call from the head of the Norwegian Film Commission saying. Gary Springer's been trying to call you, and uh, we really want you to go on this trip. And I'm like, oh, it's for real. And uh, I said, okay, um, sure, I'll go. And then I panicked. And I'm like, well, I don't want to go. Like, what if it's like, you know, not like real? I'm not on the level. Right. So I, I, I called Mark, and I said, do you want to go? And he's like, nah, really, I can't go. He says, but I know a woman that, that is in the, kind of in the industry. Take her. Um, so I, I called this woman up, who I've never met, really. And I said, hey, Brandy, you want to go to Norway? And she's like, okay. And uh, so we go to Norway, and they flew us around for 10 or 11 days, and uh, helicopters, and jets, and I mean, it was like, you know, it was like lifestyle was the rich and famous. I was like, okay, now I know why these now people were just Now you're a producer. Now you're yeah, a producer. Yeah, I was like, wow, there. this is yeah. great. Um, but you can't take away that corporate America in you, right? You can't. Uh, so the six other people are on the trip, um, didn't do anything after that trip. I went home and went, wrote an 11-page white paper. So nice. you can't take the corporate idea, right? And I said, okay, dear Norway, thank you for introducing us to all these people, regional funds, financiers, filmmakers, film commissioners, locations, you know, all screenwriters, directors, and they spent all this money. And I was like, okay, well, this is why you're the redheaded stepchild of Norway <laughs> and why Denmark and Sweden are well. You're not working together. You're a tiny country. And you need a tax incentive, and at the time they didn't. Ah. Uh, and, and what that means is, is that when, when a foreign producer and what we call co-production, so one country working with another country, co-production, in America we can't really say that it's a co-venture, but um, you utilize their governments, pay their producers, um, hello, are you listening, NEA? Um, yeah, they pay their producers to actually develop content and, and produce films and television um, with their regional and overall government tax money. So, um, and that's free money. They sure. just pay them to do it. As independent producers, and Wally, you know this, um, all the development gets burdened yeah, by either indeed. us or item. our other financiers that we somehow convince give us development money and maybe we'll pay yeah. you back, but um, um, bless their souls, right? So, so you know, the, that, that uh, co-production thing, that's where I really started to learn, okay, wait, there, there's something here. We can marry amazing independent and equity, equity that we have here, which we don't get development, equity that comes later in the process. We can marry that money, but we can develop with foreign money. For, so that our development, which we all struggle here in the sure, United States to, to find, yeah, no we use their yet. money, co-produce with them, and then release movies. So Heaven came about where I was uh, at one of these pitch conferences, and I was pitching The Bird Catcher, and these other Norwegian uh, women were pitching Heaven at the time. So it was a female producer, female director, 
female VP. And uh, I, you know, really liked what they were, were doing. It was based on a, on a best-selling Norwegian novel. And they said, would you like to be an executive producer on it? And I said, great. And I helped broker the deal for The Post to come from Canada, so mm. co-production, free money for there. That, and then I was an executive producer, and we shot that in the middle of nowhere, Norway, um, which was the coolest thing ever. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, from there, I decided to do a script writing competition with all the regional funds of Norway, and of which Mark and Hawk were very kind enough to be the master class for that. And we had 60 scripts that were submitted. We narrowed them down to two. One was The Swimmer, one was The Bird Catcher. And uh, the bird catcher was the one that kind of made it out through the process. Sure. And uh, we had them translated into English. And the whole reason why we did it there is, get to your question, is I got two and a half million dollars out of the country of Norway to make, to add to the budget of the bird catcher. The rest came from some US equity and then uh, the UK. So it's a UK, US, Norwegian uh, co production. Um, and it was six and a half million dollars, and we shot that in 2018, and then no, 17, and then released it in 2019. So, um, so did it's a that beautiful one? Beautiful film. If people haven't seen it, it yeah, it's a World War II Holocaust story that that um, that takes place on a kind of a, a conglomerate of of, of uh, stories from Norwegian Jews that um, were trying to scrape, escape to Sweden. And if any literature majors are out there, it's a little bit like Number of the Stars, Lois Lowry. You know, a lot of you know Scandinavians would try to escape to, to Sweden. Um, you know, to but uh, it, it was uh, super authentic, and and it was probably one of my most. It, it took a long time still to make. I mean, that bird catcher took probably nine years all the way through to get it to get it made. So well, I, to get it in the can. I was going to ask. You know, a recurring theme is how long it takes to get independent movies made. What do you think? You know, most people, there isn't a, an Oscar for producing, you win the best picture Oscar. What do you think is the misconception that either filmmakers or just moviegoers have about producers? You know, we know what a director is, we know what a screenwriter does. That we're all sleeping with the cast. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And which of the projects is that not true on that we've talked about? <laughs> we roll it, right? Um, I, I, this is the thing about producing, right? There's this, the, the, what a producer is, is that at any given moment, you're somebody's psychiatrist, your mother, you're, you're their, their babysitter, uh, you're their champion, you're, you're their cheerleader, you're, you're their best friend, um, you're the devil uh, in some cases, and, and you, know, you wear all these hats. But I think people don't realize that there's this intangible that goes behind the scenes to even get uh, to the point where you're actually saying, let's attach a cast, let's attach a director, let's, let's get this script in a place where we feel like we can go to a director, or can, if in, in the case of somebody that's not a filmmaker, meaning a writer who wants to also direct their own, their own stuff, right? So, um, you know, that, that to me is, is the, we're the unsung heroes. There's a misconception that we just have this endless pool of money and that, you know, we're just sitting around eating bonbons and then we're just making a few phone calls and that's it. I mean, right. most producers I know that, especially in the independent world, you know, we're on the phone and I'm not kidding, 14 hours a day, just fielding calls and, and just trying to move that network to, you know, that, that ball down the, in a sports analogy, one yard at a time, not even five yards at a time. And, and there are days where you're just like, you, you, you never get appreciated. Um, once in a while, somebody will say thank you. Um, or, or realize that there's so much behind the scenes that's going on that, that uh, oh, OK, well, how did that happen? And I'm like, well, because I made a call, you know. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, it, it is just you, you have to kind of just believe. For me, it's, I only get involved in projects that I understand who we're making them for. And I, and, I, and, and I know you, you want to know that the, that's what we're here to talk about. And, and, I, and I will say to any, any filmmaker, any producer that's sitting in the audience or, or anybody, you have to know, yes, we all can sit here and say it starts with the script. And I know you're a writer. And I, you know, yes, it does. But in the sense is you, as a producer, you, you have a script in a certain state. It could be the first draft. could be the 60th draft. We don't know. But there's something that comes out of there that you have it, for me, I have to feel moved. I have to be able to visually see the whole movie. And wh why I'm saying that is, in the same sense, I read a script three times. I read it the first time straight through, can I get through it? Um, you know, is it even readable? 
The second time I read, seriously, right? Second time I read as a marketer, because that, that's where my background came from, right? I ran multi-million dollar brands and put all these you know, amazing events on um, for, for decades. Um, I, we'd be all silly to think that people go to, the, you know, that, that there isn't this chain of, of, of companies and people that want to see it as a, as a, as a product. It is a product. I, don't kill me, but it is, right? And the sure, only way you're going to get in the theater is business. who do you, show business, right? So that business side. And then the third time I read it straight out to say, okay, who's this audience? Who are we making this for? And if it's a filmmaker that wants to write and direct it, um, secretly they don't know that I'm actually, when I ask that third question, I'm like, okay, who are you making this for? And, and I will tell you, I have been to many, many pitch festivals. Filmmakers will you know, pitch to me. If they start out by saying, I just need the money to make my film, I'm out the door. Because then they don't even know what they want. If they say to me, I wrote this because I want that person sitting in the audience and they can say what that person is or who that person is, or even a, a demographic of that person, I want them to feel this when they get out of the, when they get out of the, uh, the theater, then I'm like, all right. That's the guy. I want. That's the person that I want to work with because they have an idea of. The, they know that it's not just enough to get your film made; that there is this whole pull through side of it, and uh, they're going to be willing to 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 slug it out with you all the way to the end. Well, because it is all the way to the all end. All the way and to you the know end. Because okay. I mean. yes, I mean, there's lots of features that we haven't right. touched on yet, including the first project we did together, uh, 2016's Almost Paris, and you say all the way to the end. So it really is something you taught me on that film, my first uh, produced feature, the whole ride to the end. So, was, right, so what is the second half of that journey that you think that filmmakers, uh, especially ones who maybe haven't done it before, don't understand? What do you wish filmmakers would know about that going in? Yeah, and, and a lot of producers, right? There's a lot of producers that will develop and they'll put their little notes on and they'll shuffle some papers around and they'll come to set and, you know, there are producers out there that just, you know, they'll show up at 10 and we've already been filming for two hours and they'll be like, okay, when's like, you know, the eat the crafty. When's lunch? Yeah, yeah. when's the lunch? They eat the steak and then they're, you know, they're out and then they come back and there are producers like that i'm not i'm not saying they're not um there are also some producers that it, as soon as you say last scene and, and they're out the door and they're not there to pull it all the way through because they think the distributor is going to do it um that's dangerous you, you you're basically now taking as a producer multi-million dollar project and you're handing it over to some distributor that you may or may not know very well and just say okay great do what it do what you will with my film Put it wherever, sell it to whomever, make it go straight to streamers. You don't want to, you know, don't care about the poster. So to answer your question in a rear roundabout way, um, you have to be there. You have to believe in it from the start, like I said, and know who it is, and then make sure you have a seat at the table the entire way. And you know, in some cases, yeah, I mean, you might be working on other things, but you you can't leave that baby out naked without a diaper. I mean, you have to be there. <laughs> I only say that because Wally brought his kids over yeah, yesterday. I was say. And you know, we were diapering babies yesterday. Tough, but tough you, have to, you have to be there. You have to make the commitment. The same way that this person, this filmmaker, is entrusting you with their baby, you know, it's trust. Trust is a huge thing, right? So you have to, you have to give that trust back. Which you have to make that commitment and, 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 and be there through the end to make sure that whatever that audience that you wanted them to feel or whoever that demographic is or whoever who you want to have that emotion sitting in your in your in your in the, in the theater that you're there at the table fighting every step of the way because every you'll meet a distributor you meet a sales agent they'll be like wait let's uh let's change the poster and not put this guy on there and uh, no like you have to have a say all the way through and it doesn't end there are deliverables yes there are people that are post production supervisors and you think oh, i'm going to hire that person and they'll do the whole job but as you and i both know i mean if you're not constantly on it and making sure that it's the way that you intended to have it come out in the world be birthed to the world um then you run the risk of it not doing as well as 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 it could so um yeah i think in in answering all of that i think that that's the one thing i wish that that and again i i understand producers got a bad name because there are some some you know not so nice ones out there but there are a lot, of, most of the ones that I know that I hang out with that, you know, we, we, we slug it out and, and we fret over every little thing and, and, and uh, we cheerlead. And, and uh, for me, that's what it's about. I, I just want to see 
filmmakers like yourself, filmmakers of anybody out there. I just, I, I, to me, I just want to see you guys shine. You know, it, it, it might not seem that, but it, it really, I, I want you to shine. I don't really want to shine, but well, you're going to sh you're shining now. Yeah. Yes, um, so, in addition to the features that we've touched upon, uh, you've produced a bunch of shorts, including tonight's the Fast Track program. Yep. Um, this is a short film festival, and as Chris mentioned in his remarks, it's growing. Um, what uh, what is the value of producing shorts? What why do you do it? Um, and what advice do you have for filmmakers in terms of going to festivals? Yeah, the festival experience. Awesome question. So um, I, lo I love shorts because um, you get to really learn the filmmakers. Um, we talked about this yesterday. Shorts, it's, they're, not, they're, they're, they're films. They're feature films. They just happen to be less minutes. Um, but they still have to have you know, a, a story arc. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's the hugest mis, misperception of, of shorts is that, oh, it's just a short film. No, you can, you can learn a lot from, from uh, as a, and I'm also an artist manager, right? So you can learn a lot from a filmmaker uh, about the style in which, how, how they go about um, even putting a production together and, and who they hire as crew. And, 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 but it's still the same crew. You still have the same number of bodies, DOP and your, and your gaffer and your best boy. It's the same, it's just short minutes. So um, I've executive produced some and I've produced some. Um, I probably have executive produced more short films than, than, than produced. So what do I mean by that? So it would really be, um, you know, they, they get it off the ground and they read it, but it's when you executive produce, it would be a lot for the instance Savior, um, which actually won the Bruce Corbin Award, which then was qualified to be uh, Oscar nominated um, two years ago uh, at Santa Barbara International Film Festival. So when you win that award, which gets to your question of why do you go to festivals, um, you know, there's a chance to, 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 to be able to um, get exposure for your team, for yourself. And again, I'm not talking as a producer now, as a filmmaker, right? For yourself, for your team. Um, and then also, it's a way to network. I think we, we there's a lot of talk about, okay, what's gonna happen with festivals, and especially post-COVID. I think what happened was, we all got so used to watching stuff in our own little shells, right? In our own little worlds. Um, but there's something special about still sitting at a festival um, and being able to see I don't want to say raw, but to see budding people emerging, um, emerging um, that aspire to do something. And, it, and I'm in awe of anybody who is able to get a short, not only in the can, but get it in the can well, mm. and then be brave enough to then say, I'm going to submit it to this festival. And if they take it, go, show up, celebrate that, uh, and bring as many of your crew as you can. I mean, that, because you never know who you'll meet at that festival who will see your, see your work, um, or, or in the same sense, not all about you, right? It, you may see another person's piece of work and be like, oh, I, 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 who was that? Who did you use as your DP? Or who did you use as your costume designer? Or, oh, I have to work with you. Let's, let's work together. Um, I think that's important. It, we have to help one another rise to the next level. I, I think if we do more of that, even if you have no, n no dog in the fight, so to speak, right? If you can just, that's what you get out of festivals. It's, it's that, it's that. And, and, and to be honest, when I went all in in 2008, I, I knew a lot from corporate America, but truthfully, I did not know a lot about the, the film industry and the business side of it. I, on my own dime, flew to Berlin and to the European film market, and honest to God, I didn't know a soul there. And I showed up in Berlin, as only woman, I didn't have a sidekick with me or anything. And I just listened and I asked questions and I wasn't afraid to say, I don't know. Mm. And you'd be amazed when you say, I don't know, people then will be like, well, let me, let me teach you. And I, and, and I, I will say a, a lot of the filmmakers and in, in, in the film commissioners that I met, uh, uh, over there in Europe, they taught me a lot about what co-productions were, and, and 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 from there, that's when you build this network of you know uh, people pitching their projects, and you're like, wow, I really like these people. These are you know, these, you know whether they're you know Norwegian or Swedish or Croatian or whatever, um, and that Berlin is a market and a festival. So that's the importance. Even if you don't have a project, I encourage 
if you can, and I know it's, you know, it's sometimes it's kind of costly, but the, the return on your investment is, is that you're building this, and dare I say it, and I know we're not allowed to say this word anymore, old school, but you're building your Rolodex. Now you know how old I am. <laughs> um, but you are, because at any given time, you'll be able to call somebody, and then if you build your reputation like that, and uh, then people, they'll call, I, I get calls all the time. Somebody I met in 214 would be like, yeah, we were at this, you know, in Latvia at, at the European Film Awards. And, and, you know, I remember having a nice chat with you. And, you know, I got this great project. Do you know anybody? And, again, I don't sit there and say, oh, I want to be involved. I'm like, yeah, I know that person here. Let me give you that number, and I connect them up. So, um, actually, you know that good, st you know, that, that, that story, right? So, how I connected you up to oh, Paul well, Reiser. Oh, yes, indeed. Right? Yes, so, yeah. yeah. Look for that film. Right. So, that's, that's why you go to festivals. And so... Things like East Hampton Film Festival, and thanks, Chris, for doing this, is that they're super important. And I just, my big thing now is I sit, I sit on a couple of boards, and one of them is, is, is uh, for a different uh, 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 Rehoboth Beef Film Society. And uh, I want the NEA, and I want our states and our local government to give more to the, to the arts. But it, it's well, hard. We'll see how it, that it's goes. It's hard, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's important. And it I, I think if we lose this, we will lose out to the streamers. We, it, it will... We will become uh, just a, a jaded Feeders. bunch of people, and there's look at this. Like this is great. Well, I'm, before we uh, open up to some questions, speaking of sort of emerging filmmakers, especially folks who may be in the audience who, uh, you know, we're not necessarily near, sort of between Boston and New York. Um, Northampton, East Hampton is a very lively art scene. I know you know Northampton from back in the day. Yep. What advice would you have? For screenwriters, for directors, for people who maybe want to make their first short or make a micro-budget feature in terms of working with a producer or just doing it on their own? There's a lot of uh, resources out there. There are a lot of um, short film competitions, script competitions. Um, uh, you know, don't poo-poo it, Film Freeway, actually. They're, they're, you you got to scroll through them. You have to really look and, and, and see which ones are... Um, are, are legit and which ones might not be. Um, but there are more uh, type of, of contests, if you will, that, that you can apply to um, and, and, and get some, some funding that way. Um, but the other thing is, in 2008, they passed the Job Fund Crowd Act. Why am I saying that? Because um, President Obama at the time passed this Crowd Fund Act in 2008, and what came of that is the fact that you, up until that point, there were some regulations of where you can ask people for money, right? So SEC would say you can only have um, 250 accredited um, uh, uh, investors. Uh, what the Crowdfund Act did is it started Kickstarter and it started Indiegogo. Oh. Um, and I would say those platforms for short films are sure. a great just, way to get started because there are a lot of people out there that, that might not be able to give you 50000 but they will give you 25000 and then somebody else will give you 25000 And you don't need to make a short film um, with the technology that we have now. Um, you, you don't need to make it for fifty or sixty. You can you can you can make it for ten or twelve. Um, you can make it for less. If you, you think if you think smart, five. right? You just have to know why you're doing it, and and have a plan. And then I, and the same thing counts for short films. Know which festivals are the right ones that you should apply to. Because if you you know the Torontos of the world, the Tribecas of the world, they're getting six or seven thousand submissions, and. Again, but if you show up and you get to know people, and maybe your film's not there, but you get to know the programmers, um, then when you're ready to submit your film, you can call that programmer and say, hey, you know, is there a waiver code I can get? Um, but working with a producer, an experienced one, yes, we, we might charge you a little bit, but what you also get is you get waiver codes <laughs> yeah, <so much. laughs> you know, that we have relationships with. And if we're vouching for you, then a lot of these programs, programs will be like, all right, if you're vouching for this film, I, I, you know, I'll take it. I'm going to really Does that answer it. your question? That I'm does. sorry. I know no, I am. No, no, <laughs> Chatty, no. Chatty we're going to uh, open it up to, to yes, <laughs> exactly. We're going to open it up for audience questions. But before we do so, we've been having sort of a private joke all week about how this is a James Lipton 
uh, interview as Chris Ferry asked for. So very quickly, we're going to run Lisa through. Uh, for anyone who remembers inside the actor's studio, the uh, Bernard Pivot Bouillon de Cotillard 10 questions. So very quickly, what is your favorite word, Lisa G. Black? Yeah, I did the favorite, like, the, I have a question about this one. Go for it. Is it the way you like it, how it sounds? It's whatever you or, like. Or is it like the meaning of whatever it? Whatever you like. What is your so favorite? Don't no, overthink it. No, I'm just saying, like, like blah, 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 blah. So I, I, I have to say, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, I'd say, I'd say kindness. Kindness. Yeah, kindness. Kindness. That's lovely. Yeah, kindness. Uh, what is your least favorite word? Oh, God. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, optics. optics. I, I great son of black. And, like, stop it. saying the word optics. Yeah, what, optics. Uh, yeah. What, uh, what turns you on? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, at, at what decade? <laughs> the answer is your husband, by the way. What, what turns you on tonight? Um, now, you know what turns me on? Seriously. And this is going to sound so crazy, but I get so happy when I actually see somebody else like doing the pinnacle of like just have, getting the limelight. Like the, you know, for instance, when you went and and you you were able to go and write with Paul Reiser, and then you called me up you know, three years later. They make the movie, and you're like, guess what? They invited me to go to Austin to 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 see it, Austin Film Festival. That turns me on. That makes oh, me like you. super happy. That's why um, you're awesome you know, at this. Yeah, yeah, or you know, or or Liam Neeson. No, no <laughs> not just. Uh, <laughs> what turns you off? Um, oh wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, dis disloyalty. Um, mm. Yeah, people yeah. that are that are inauthentic. People that are um, self serving, uh, and then they don't they don't lead with with, with uh, service leadership. Yeah, that, yeah, that just yeah. What yeah. what sound disloyalty is a very good one self serving. Yeah, what what sounds or noise do you love? Yeah, um, a well placed cowbell in a rock song. Ah. <laughs> More cowbell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But what uh, sounds or noise do you not like? Yeah, ambulances. Okay. Sirens. What is your favorite curse word? <laughs> this uh this is uh this is a good one. Uh, no. Uh, can I have a tie? Sure, go like, for it. Cocksucker or motherfucker? That's, that's a point. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Yeah, this is a tough one too. It's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I, I'll say this. Could it be? Um, I'd like to, you know, be to have my own sailboat and just sail, and then just take people around and, sure, and yeah. have people tell stories, or be. Uh, to be, be do you a, know how to sail? Be, I, I do, but okay. not well. All I right. don't have my captain's license yet. But ultimately, you said, "What, what do you want to attempt?" Yeah, because that would yeah. be super cool. Uh, or really, to be a diplomat. I, 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 I've had the the. Uh, fortunate to, to be in and out of a couple of our embassies uh, overseas as a cultural whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that would be kind of cool to be a, an ambassador yeah. um, to a Nordic country, though. No, you know, no offense, but I don't want to really go in anywhere like, you know, like right. Denmark, yes. you know, where we can eat well nice food, and I can have everybody safe. over yeah. and we can like sit down and like have, you know, a Marcel Pro kind of like, you know, like a salon. I'd like to run a salon. Well, Wouldn't that be there's great? Still time. There, yeah, Just like, there you know, get a big house and run a salon like and have like, Artists come and go. That would what, be kind of cool. Uh, actually, what yeah. profession would you absolutely not want to attempt? Yeah. Producing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. no. Um, and yet well, here we know. are. Don't. Um, geez, we're not attempt. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I wish I had an answer to that. We went on not to do them on that. I mean, I think for me, because I, I respect, and this is why this was a tough one, and I, I'm not just saying that because I'm on, on stage. Uh, my father, when I, I lo loved him dearly, he's been dead 30 years, um, you know, he used to say he would treat, you know, a guy on the street, a janitor, or a CEO the same way. And so that's how I was raised. I was raised that, that you don't see people from their, as their professions, you see people as people. And uh, so, in, in in true, you know, in true in, in true truth here, I I, uh, I I don't know if there was a profession I wouldn't want to do. So, um, 
just because of it's, it's somebody's profession. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I kind of like what I do, you know? I mean, I was in sales, for God's sakes. I so mean, you know, yeah. I wouldn't want to go back to that. Sales. Can, we, can we just say that? Sure. <laughs> so finally, uh, of course, if heaven exists, yeah. uh, when they open up the gates and say, welcome, Lisa G. Black, what would you like uh, them to say? Yeah. That's an easy one. Go for um, it. I had to take my necklace off, so um, uh, I'm Catholic. Uh, I, I'd like to get up there and then have St. Peter say to me, not Jesus, but St. Peter, just be like, Look at all these people that you touch their lives. You know, well done. You can come in. And, you know, we won't, we'll pretend all that, the sins you do all the time. We forgive you. It's all good. You know, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, you've touched all these people's lives. You made their lives better. Uh, and in turn, uh, you know, so come on in. Make, it, make it fun up here. You certainly have. Yeah. You've certainly done it for me. Let's oh, have a round of applause for Lisa. And uh, let's uh, open it up to some questions. I'm Any so questions sorry, I kind of rambled audience? on. So. No, no, please. Yeah, and I'm pulling You're up my in the spotlight. Uh, any questions out there? Don't be shy. I can barely see you, but raise your hand. Can we talk? Or? Yeah. Okay, sure. Hi, um, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, my short film, 98 Honda, we made the short film with uh, the primary objective of making a full length feature. So. Our shorts are proof of concept. Proof of concept, yeah. yeah. Um, and we have some really awesome execs attached. I was a segment producer at The Daily Show, so we have some correspondence attached, and I'm really pumped about that. Excellent. So this is um, my first foray into the festival scrum. This is, in particular, my first festival in general. And um, as we thank you, as we go forth, I'd love to hear any sort of, like, I don't know, logistical advice when it comes to pitching or trying to land a big financier studio. Yep. Uh, luckily, we've had some meetings, but you know, any, um, anything from, uh, from a pro? Yeah, so uh, proof of concept, excellent. That's uh, amazing. But again, make sure in every meeting that you have, if you're fortunate enough to get one, who are you making it for? Who, who is it for, right? What's the demographic? Where do you see it? Do you see it as a straight to streamer? Do you see it as a day and date? Day and date means if they're gonna release it in a theater or on the streamer at the same time. Um, you know, really have a strong finance plan because that financier is gonna be like, okay, or that distributor or sales agent, they're gonna see, the, first and foremost, you know they're gonna take a massive percentage of, of, of your stuff, right? To sell your film, they're gonna give you this long contract, and Molly can tell you, they're gonna be like, they'll start out and be like, we're gonna take 32% and we're gonna do $50,000 in marketing and da 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 da. Yeah, you, that's all negotiable, so that's where having an experienced producer with you can really say, no, nah, come on, we're not, you're not doing 50,000 in marketing fees, you're not doing 32%, we'll do 18%. So, and certain sales agents you might not want Want. So to answer your question, go to all of them if you can. Go, go to Tribeca. Go to Boston International. I'm just trying to think of the ones that are local. Go to Chicago. Go to Toronto. Go, go to even some of the small. Woodstock is not far from here. They have a lot of heavy hitters at Woodstock. Um, go to as many as you can. And you know, then you just talk to people. Tell them that you have this proof of concept, but for the most part, the markets, right? For you, because you're trying to break into that, you have to go to AFM, you have to go to the European full market. To me, I would go European full market, which takes place every February in Berlin, which is way doable, better than Cannes. Cannes like one of these things, it's like a circus. Um, you want to see it once, but you kind of don't really ever want to go back because you know by the time May rolls around, most of the major studios have spent all their money and um, this is where the business side comes in, right? Q1, they, you know, that my, the money that they had allocated is gonna be washed up. Q2, um, you know, it's already spent. So Berlin happens in Q1. So you meet a lot of people there. So for you, I would definitely make sure your pitch deck is really tight, who you're making it for, and do your research. You know, think about, can I ask what, what genre is your? Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's a black comedy it's, uh, with a sci-fi twist. It's still in a comedy set in 2004. Okay, great. And then, do you have like a do you have like a wish list of who you want in the in the in the, in the cast? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're actually my uh, the person who starred and wrote it. Um, his name is Nav Absent. He's at the Netflix is a joke festival right now. Right on. We're trying to get um, the rapper Freddie Gibbs to be a part of it. We have a there. And 
Yeah, yeah. give a wish list. Good, good. good casting director. Yeah. You know, get a good casting director. And you know, they don't have to cast the whole movie, right? Just focus on one or two roles first. Um, and then uh, for that, yeah, for sci-fi ones, then it would be also, um, if you can, go to, go to Sitches, right? Sitches or, or that, the, the other sci-fi one that's out there, I forget, the one that's in Arizona. Um, but yeah, that, do that. Um, people take submissions, but that's how you know what kind of films, if, if you go to the markets, that's how you know what sale, if you go to booth to booth to booth, right? You have to look and see, this sales agent, they're selling four rom-coms, two dramas, one horror, Obviously, that's not for you, right? But if you go to, like, say, Odin's Eye or, or Myriad, and they, you see that they have three sci-fis, don't get discouraged and think, oh, well, they're not going to want another sci-fi. Clearly, that sales team, they feel comfortable selling that particular genre to their buyers, right? So that's where, you ha that's where festivals also kind of coming full circle in our conversation matter, even if you don't have a project or in this stage, in an infancy kind of stage. Um, yeah, that, that's where you get to see which, which distributors you, you know you want to target. So I hope that was an okay. Was that an all right answer? Awesome. You sure? Thank all right. Sure. I'm around. If you can ask me some more questions. Yeah. Hi. I, I, yeah. I sort of have a follow up there. You mentioned have a really strong pitch deck. Could you describe what makes a pitch deck really strong? Like, what do you yeah, I, I've seen so many. I th I've seen a lot of um, ones that are electronic and really technical and la, 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 la. Uh, you know, to be honest, I, most of the financiers that I know that put in money, um, you know, they're not, they're not a, you know, they don't really, you know, they, they, they have an intention span of about five seconds, right? So get it all, I, you know, just have it creatively give the tone. For me, I like, and for, I know the financiers that I work with, they want to know the tone, right? So even if it's with colors, or with language and, and typeface, you know, um, just make sure you that is your calling card of what the type of film that you want to make, and then have all the pertinent information up there. Um, you know, what you think the budget might be, what do you think the target audience, where do you, what, what, how do you want to take it to market, right? Is it just for a streamer? Is it, you know, at the end of the day, theatricals, is, it, it, it's tough, guys. I mean, it, it, right now, uh, 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 the gentleman who, hopefully, if you guys stick around and watch Fast Track Program, um, my, my uh, producing partner and writer-director, Nick Wilkinson, who happens to be here, um, we have been working on a feature film called Oldie Boys, and we have been working on it for three years. We went to the International Finance Forum. Also, that's what I wanted to say. International Finance Forum at Toronto. The closing date is June 2nd. If you go on Ontario Media Creative Development, go to that because that is, uh, if they pick you, then you get to meet like Bleecker Street and A24 and it's like massive. Um, find me later and I'll, I'll give you guys everything. Um, so what I was saying, Nick is here. This film, um, we went through, Nick, how many, right? Like four or five different versions of what the pitch deck should look like. But at the end of the day, they just want to know the, the, the basics. How much is the budget, do you think? Where are you shooting? What are the tax credits? What can we get back? What's the finance, you know, like what's the synopsis? Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, who, who's in it, you know, or, or who do you want it to be in it? So, um, you know, just keep it simple, you know? I know that's such a... No, weird thing to say, advice. but no, it, no, there's no, really no reason to have bells and whistles. Because here, 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 here's the thing about what I learned from business and how I apply it to the entertainment industry, right? Is that people who invest, whether it's uh, on a crowd fund, right, or, or a big financier or a sales agent, because remember, that sales, you know, that distributor is investing, right? Uh, not just hard money. They invest in, in, in the team. They invest in the team. Be really mindful of who you bring into your team. That's just as important, um, really. Because sometimes you might want that shiny, slick producer who's got all the, but that producer might be the worst thing to ever happen to you. Pe people tend to want to invest in, in when they see true determination and passion and, and, and somebody who has a plan. Right, but I, I'm going to get here, and this is how I'm going to do it. And it might take me, you know, ten years. It might take me two years, but they want to see that you're willing to put the time in, and that you've thought about all the other things that could go wrong. But then you have solutions for them, and those are the that, that's when you, you're, you, you're just you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself, and why it is that this particular story 
you need to have it out into the world. And that's when it goes back to what I had said earlier, which is what do you want somebody to say um, when they walk out of your theater? For me, on the bird catcher, and you know, it's, it's hard making a World War II Holocaust story. I, I, what I said in my pitches to, you know, when I was trying to get it made, is I said, I want somebody to go home and you know, somebody, their best friend calls them and they say, hey, you know, oh, what's going on and da da da. And then you stop in the middle of the sentence and said, I just saw this film called The Bird Catcher. Oh my God, you have to see it. And I think you all here probably have, in some way, have had that kind of conversation. You're like, oh my God, I just saw this thing. You have to see it, right? That is what you want for your project, right? You want somebody to, to, to say, yeah, you, got, you got to see that. Not because Tom Cruise is in it, or because they were moved by what you wanted to put out, that, that story that you wanted to put out in the world. Right? They were moved by that. So that, that's why the arts are still so humongously important. Um, and every person you bring to the team is, is important, from your composer to, to your costume designer to the guy who's running key grip. So, you know, because that, that could derail, you know, you're shooting long hours and then all of a sudden now you're over budget and now, you know, now your you know, financiers are not happy. So really be mindful of, of, of who you surround yourself with. So, and it's not always the shiniest person in the room either. Um, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Angela Grout. Hi, hey, Angela. How are Hi. you? Yep. So you're talking a little bit about, you know, getting the developmental money. And, you know, you talked about getting the money internationally and then still work. So it sounds like you got money internationally from Norway. From some. From some of the projects, and yeah. And then you brought it to back to America. Yeah. And you did, and you got more money. With well, we filmed people. them in Norway, too, though. But then when you got here, you got rebate money? We are, I am not a rebate money. So on the Berkshire, we got, no, on, the, on here, it was straight up equity. Equity from the United States, soft money, what we call soft money, from Europe, right? So I'll give you an example. Uh, this gentleman has got that, that, that concept, right? Or, or, or just whatever. You say, I have this script. So if you're an American independent filmmaker, right? Think about, okay, does it need to be filmed here? Can it be filmed in a country that has a really good you know, um, system in place to film. So can you film it in the UK, which by the way now is 40% tax credit, which is this soccer movie that Nick and I are doing. Um, or can you film it in a country that has a more favorable way or process, right, to get that tax incentive? Can you do that, right? I mean, it's no lie. Why do we go to Canada? Half of the television programs that you all watch right now are actually shoot, shot in Toronto. Why? Because it's cheaper to shoot in Toronto. And they get money back to shoot in Toronto. So um, the first step would be, if you wanted to do it that route, find yourself a really good co-producer, um, and a producer from that country. And, and it's not as hard as you, as you think. Um, the other th also is that you know don't discount the Producers Guild of America, which I happen to be a part of. Um, you know, there's a lot of regionals, and I'm in the capital region. I'm also a part of the east region, but we're 8,500 members strong, and we're a trade organization, so we're not a real, real union. Um, you know, we don't have the same benefits as WGA and stuff like that, so what we are willing to do is that there, there's a whole list. You can go on the PGA site, and you can look up, you know, who, who these producers are and find one that may be closer in your area and, 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 and do that. But um, for almost Paris, we used a private equity, yeah. but we still used a sales agent and got some money back from the post, right? So yeah. that's another way you can get money, right? When you're thinking of your finance plan, right? You have to think, how much can I get from what we call hard money, right? Somebody giving you some hard cash. How much can I get from what we call soft money? Somebody gives you a grant or the NEA gives you a grant or Sloan Foundation. They do projects that have science, right? Um, you can apply for those, and that's grant money, right? You don't have to pay that back. So, um, and then you look at it that way, and then you say, okay, what else do I have a gap? And there's these lovely companies called debt financiers. And so, you know, they, those are the headgears of the world. Those are the three-point capitals of the world, um, which go to South by Southwest. They go to a mall, but what they want to see is that you have a package in place. So to get started, um, I hate to tell you and break it to you, but unless you work with a co-producer that actually their government is giving them money to develop, which is what I started, and that's why half of Netflix now does what they do. I mean, that was the model I created 10 years ago, 14, 15 years ago. Um, it, it's going to take you a little bit of your own 
your own steam or you know find find somebody that believes in you and, and is willing to risk you know a little a little money up front yeah. well being american i'd rather do it in america but yeah. i also see the yeah. incentives of taking it somewhere else so when they're offering you money to do it it's new jersey is a really good place to film right now i love massachusetts oh, i went to school here and everything but um 37 percent tax credit so I think we have time for one more question, right. and then there's going to be a uh, wine and cheese reception in the lobby, and you can ask Lisa more questions there. Uh, did you have a question, yeah. sir? Yes. Yeah, one last question. Sorry, sorry to be sitting in a spot. Oh, oh, I'm no, not no, used to it. Your eyes. Yeah. Um, as a screenwriter, I'm wondering how you how scripts find their way to your desk, especially the ones that you will actually read, because um, I found that unless you have an agent or a manager, um, they won't look at them and you can't get an agent or a manager unless you've already produced something. Yeah. Sort of a catch-22. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, that's true. Um, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, there are agencies like Anonymous Content that manage artists and because managers, y'all know the difference, right? That agents, all they care about is taking their 10%. Um, I'm real, please don't play this publicly. No, I'm kidding. Um, we love agents. We love them all. But their whole job is just to, to field offers and then and then have their 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 clients, um, you know, and, and get a paycheck. Managers, you know, I respect them more because I happen to be one of those producer managers. Um, they they really care about that filmmaker as a whole. Um, and yes, you're right. It's a little hard um, when they have these, you know, larger companies like Anonymous Content, uh, Management 360. Um, but but it goes back to what Wally had said is that if you make a short film or you make, so you have the screenplay, right? Contests, things like that. But also going to festivals, you meet other producers and you have a conversation with them. Don't pitch them uh, off the bat, right? Just pretend you're with your friends and have a conversation and let them get to know who you are. And then you can um, slowly somehow work. Because nine times out of 10, I'll, 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 if I'm talking to somebody and they haven't, immediately laid into their pitch. Um, and I get a good vibe from them and be like, oh, I'll say, oh, you know, what are you working on? Uh, you know, uh, you have this great screenplay, you know, can I read it? Um, you know, uh, but it's, uh, that's, it, 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 how do I say this? Uh, just keep going, keep, just keep, because you know, five people you may ask to read your screenplay, they'll say no, but that sixth person might say yes. Um, the one thing that I will say that I, and it's only just because of the, the way how litigious we are in this country. Um, don't go on IMDb and, and email uh, cold, right? It, it, see if there's a connection to a connection. So for instance, uh, Wally, if he had a screenplay. Um, I do, are you asking? Well, <laughs> here, 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 here's an example that problems with people we were talking about. So Wally and I did Almost Paris, right? Um, I'm on the set of another project with the late great Ash Christian, my producing partner, called Miles, right? Molly Shannon, Missy Piles, and Paul Reiser. Um, one of the other things I do as a producer is I, wear, I do EPK. So I'm sitting there interviewing Paul Reiser. We're on our set, Miles. And he says to me, Lisa, he said, I got an idea. He's like, it's about a guy from Queens who goes to Ireland and a guy from Ireland that goes back to Queens. And I'm like, Spoiler oh, alert. Right. So, so I'm like, and? And he's like, I need a writer. And it took me all about five seconds. It's true, Wally was telling you. I said, I got the guy. I got the guy. I got the guy. And at that point, I've only made one project with yeah. Wally and you know, a couple others. But we, we, I knew Wally was the right guy for Paul. And I put them together. And lo and behold, three and a half years later, yeah, you, can you, 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 you can look for it soon. Yeah. So um, don't cold call unless you actually had somebody introduce you. That's my advice there, because you, you know, ne never going to happen. Um, and it's only because we're litigious, right? So if somebody give, you give us our screenplay, and God forbid uh, we make something similar to that, and we have not asked for that submission. And, and that is the other reason why managers and agents say we don't take submissions. It's because they may have something like it in the works. I mean, we're all going to sit here and laugh at ourselves if you think we have the only original idea that's never been taught. Right? It's all kind of, you yeah. know, yeah. somebody else. So that's the that's only reason is that we don't want anybody coming back and saying, oh, I sent you my screenplay and you made this thing and now I'm going to sue you. Um, unfortunately, that's the not so nice part of this business. But um, 
but nine times out of 10, if you are in these kind of things and you say somebody wants to read, um, and also respect, like I'll, I happen to be the kind of person that somebody will say, hey, can you read this? And I'll say, I, I am just no bandwidth right now. I got seven things, millions going, and I'll lean them on back and say, thank you, but I, I, I'm, we're not taking any submissions, or I, I, you know, come back to me in, in, a, in you know, nine months, and uh, if something frees up, maybe, but don't send it, like just, but thank you for reaching out. I'm kind enough to, to do that, but um, I, I, I wish I had better advice for you. The other thing I would say is you don't need an agent. Go, go find your team. Go find your team and raise some money. And, and, and like that gentleman in the back, you know, maybe, maybe do a, a proof of concept or, or uh, you know, just, just, just put the package together and then go from there. I mean, you're going to need a producer no matter what. And the best place to do that is find them at a market or a festival. So I, well, I hope that answers Let's the thank Lisa, yeah. everybody, for being here today. Thank you, folks, and we'll see you in the lobby. Thank you.